Welcome guys in this fourth video of this game engine series. Now in the previous video we've created our main window and um, yeah um, we didn't have this background color so it was dark even though we've defined it here we didn't have the background color it's because we didn't clear the renderer before presenting it. So every time we need to clear the renderer before presenting it that's important. So that's why we didn't have the, back, the background color that we've defined here. So if I run it right now, you can see we have the background color coming. So it's it's not a big deal. Now in this video, we're going to be creating our texture manager class. We'll be able to draw things on the screen. So in order for us to do that, uh, we simply have to go ahead and create a new class. So we're going to be calling it texture manager. So we want a header and an and implement, implementation file so make sure you have this checked and they're also going to be in the same folder so I need to create a folder for that. I'm going to call that folder graphic so graphics so you can call it whatever you want it doesn't matter but for me I'm going to go with that so I'll say create yes I want it to be added into that. We have our graphic folder we have the texture manager so this is our texture manager so if you remember in the game engine class we we had this thing about the singlet and stuff and we, we didn't want to have many instances of our class so we're going to be doing the same thing for the texture manager class so we need to add this um, static method to set this class as being static so we don't want to create many instances we only want we, want, we only want to have one texture manager in the whole process so that's why we create a static member which is which is the texture manager instance and now we create the static method which actually reference to that and you still have to define this constructor as being private so only this function here can call the, cons the, the constructor and that's that's important now our um, texture manager class need to have some uh, important functions now the first function which is going to be important to us is going to be the function to load to load texture and whenever we load the texture we want to store that texture we will store that texture in, in, in a map we will come into that in a couple of seconds or minutes whatever and for that we need to specify an id for that texture that we just loaded so that's why we need here I need to add like include string that's in point I also need to include it to include SDL because we need SDL here so just add those two guys so we are string and here I'm gonna say ID so this is the ID of the texture that we loaded and yeah we need the file name of that textures so still have string file name this is the load function the second function is the drop so maybe we want to remove a texture from the map because you know we don't want to use that anymore we have a drop function for that and we just have to give the id of that texture and then we'll be able to drop it from the from the map so that's it the third function is clean so when we when we finish you know doing all that kind of stuff we need to do with the engine we need to clean all those textures from the memory because those are pointers and if we don't set them back to null pointer then they will stay in the memory and you will probably face some memory leaking and so that's why it's important for us to clean so we say clean so now we also need to define uh, um, two important functions. We have a function to draw static object, static texture, like you know, a tree, something in the background, the background image, and we also have another one to draw frames. That's when we talk about animation. But for now, we're just going to be adding the draw function. We're going to be testing the draw function before talking about because we're going to be talking about animation in the next video. So in this one, we're just creating the draw function now this is how the draw function looks like so let me simply paste this the first parameter is the id of the texture we want to draw on the screen 
now we need to offset the position on the screen where should the object be printed and we also need the size of that object you know the width and the height and now should it be flipped horizontally or vertically or should it just stay as it is so you remember this SDL flip uh, from SDL library so it doesn't matter it, it's that so we have this function right here now we can go here we need to remove this constructor and destructor all we need here is to define it I don't want to write anything because we won't write anything in the constructor so we don't need to have it over there and now there is a fast way adding codes uh, adding uh, the implementation of your method without having to write everything yourself so just click write and insert insert right here and you say all class method without implementation you see we have all method we have the load drop and clean so just add them now i need to organize things here a little bit need this load to be here we're going to be implementing our load function the load function is going to be the first one we're going to be implementing now in sdl um, to load any uh, texture we need to use uh, the so-called uh, surface so we need a surface to be able to load texture because everything is handled in the background with surfaces so we say sdl surface which is going to be a pointer so surface and we simply say img load so um yeah the img load is a function from the stl uh, image library which simply load an image and turn it into a surface which in return is going to be uh, turned into a texture so that's the idea load img load and i can simply pass the file name since this function is written in c which means to take a cont char so, you know as parameter i need to convert my string into a char that's why i need to say c str so there we've loaded this image and turned it into a surface now we need to make sure this surface is not a null pointer it's not you know that we actually have something in there so that's why we check if it's equal to null pointer then this function will simply return false but we also need to give the you know like an error message to make sure maybe the, the error could, could could be because the file doesn't exist and all that kind of stuff now the way the text is formatted here is not important I just want to say fail to load texture and I give the name of the texture of the file name and uh, also this should be file name not source file name and also the error so but if it didn't happen if everything was correct so then we create a texture oh, the texture which is gonna be a pointer so texture which is gonna be equal to SDL we need to create a texture create texture from surface so we have a surface and we want to create a texture out of it now in order for us to create a texture we need to have a renderer on which this texture will, is going to be created that's why we need our engine if you remember in the engine class we've created the renderer and create a get function to access that renderer and we only want uh, want to have one renderer all over the code we don't want to have thousand renderer everywhere and you know that's dangerous so that's why we simply include our engine and now we simply say engine get instance and we get the renderer we have the renderer right there and we need another we need the surface from which the texture will be created we have created that surface before so I just passed it here and we have our texture created now we also need to make sure the texture was created successfully so we it's important because when the code will get huge if you have some kind of problem from this kind of thing you need to make sure that you know where the problem is coming from because if you don't track your code then you will have to struggle too much with errors and stuff later on so that's why it's important to always print some values and text when anything went wrong or something like that so I know it doesn't you know it's not funny but whatever 
so if this is a null pointer so we want to return false that means it fails so and uh, we also want to give a, an error message to make sure that that we know what is going on maybe you know this function has a problem maybe this renderer was wrong and all that kind of stuff and yeah we simply give the error message but now if this was correct then we simply say return true now if you see this code we we've already loaded our our image and turned it into a texture but we haven't used this id right here because we want to be uh, we want to create like a map in which we will always have reference on texture through the ids so in order for us to do that we need to go back into our header where we created our texture manager and we need to create a map there so this is our map let me give a second to create it so you can see i need to add a map up to here so map so we have the std map so this is a string which is the id and in the other side we have the texture so we always reference to this texture by using this id right here and we just call it texture map you can call it whatever you want it's not important now right here we need to add this texture to our texture map because yeah we've tested we've loaded and we tested and everything was correct then we can load it in our map we sure that this map was loaded and we can simply but so we say texture map with the id that is given as parameter it's going to be equal to texture and we have our texture loaded now um, the next step is to create the draw texture function so this function is going to be drawing so if you remember we create a prototype of it so we're going to be writing this and testing this with any kind of image we figure out somehow something now in order for you to draw anything with sdl there is so there is something called sdl rectangle so which are important components which is you defined which part of the image is going to be showing on the screen so that's that's the idea of those sdl rect so let us write some code we're going to be saying sdl rect and there are two different rect we have a source and a destination the source is the part of the image we want to show on the screen and the destination is where on the screen we want to show this so we have the source and uh, i'm going to say source rect call it like that it's equal to now the source rect because we want to show the whole image on the screen a rectangle has four four parts so i hope you know at least what is the rectangle so we have width and we have height so this is the source we want to take the whole image we start from the corner of the image so let me show you for example if i open an image i still have to find it first so if i go ahead and open like this folder right here and maybe here so if i run this image right here then when we want to render an image we want to start from the corner right here zero and we want to go to the width down here i'm opening the image with vs code that's weird but it doesn't matter so that's all we want right now so that's why we put everything here to zero that's the idea behind this now the next thing to do is to define the destination so we have the source and we want to define the destination so we do the same thing we say sdl and we simply say destination rect is equal to now the destination is defined by the position given up here we want it to be exactly where this guy here is specified so x y and the width width and height are going to be the same in this case so we have this like now there is uh, this function is in sdl called render render copy sdl render copy we use this one because we want to have some more information there is a simple function called render copy which doesn't give you um, 
more component like the angle you want to maybe rotate your your object with, with an angle so that's why we, we want to use this one because we can rotate our object and all that kind of stuff now the first parameter is the renderer on which we want to render this so we remember our engine you see why it was important for us to have this as singlet in class because we only have one renderer no matter where we're at in the code we only, we only have one renderer so get instance get renderer now the second parameter is the texture we want to throw on the screen now we have an id given right here and we have our map so we simply say map and texture map and we pass our id we can access that texture easily the third component is like uh, the source so we're gonna be saying source rect since those are pointer we didn't define pointer we need to pass the reference because yeah we need to pass the address of those rect so that yeah the compiler will know where to find them in the memory and all that kind of stuff the same thing for the destination rect and uh, this parameter here is the angle at which we want to you know rotate but we don't want to use that right now the rest this is the point in which you want to center so i'm going to just put null pointer here we don't need that one the last one is how you want the object to be oriented do you want to flip it horizontally or do you want to flip it vertically so we have our flip given here on the top so we simply pass it and now our draw function is complete now i think this video is getting long so let's go ahead and test if this is working so we're gonna be moving to our engine and there we need to load an image so um go to your project folder that's important so go to your project folder and there i want you to create a new folder called assets you can give it another name doesn't matter so uh, i need to find an image uh, give me a second so yeah i have my assets folder right here i need to find something no i need something a little bit huge tree yeah so i'm gonna take this one so i'm gonna go back to my folder to the assets and i paste it here so the name of this image is tree so okay now i can come here and load that image but first we need to bring our texture manager class texture manager so i will say texture manager get instance load and i need to specify the id i'm just gonna say tree doesn't matter now the source file the the file name where the file is located so you just say assets assets not sure if it's like this back or forward slash need to make sure just write it tree dot png so the image is loaded now that the image is loaded we can draw it with the render so we come here in the render function we say texture manager get instance draw we need to give uh, the id of the image that we just loaded so it's tree the position let's say 100 by 100 doesn't matter now the width i need to know how it, as on the size of that image so let me check so the image is um 347 by 465 so let me make sure i put the correct value 347 and and 465 now the the last variable is the flip if you remember when we define our object we say our um, texture manager class we've said that this could be with the default value so we don't have to give that actually so if we don't have any problem this should work normally uh, there it starts so let me see ah we haven't defined the the static object of our class so let's go ahead and add this so texture manager I always forget this I don't know why texture manager instance is equal to null pointer 
So, let's compile it again and see. Ta-da! You have it on the screen. We have our drop function right here. All we want to do with this function is to remove the texture from our texture map that we've created. Let's say, for example, you have an enemy or you have a specific object which was important in a level, for example, of your game. And then we're not in that level anymore. So you don't need that texture anymore. You don't have to keep that in the memory even though you don't need it. So you can simply remove it. Oh, that's just an example that uh, could occurs and yeah so in order for us to do that we we'll simply say sdl destroy because sdl actually provides us a function to destroy texture if you don't destroy them there won't be because those are pointers and you need to you know to destroy them from the memory and what we need to do is to pass our texture map and give the id which we want to destroy and after we've destroyed it, we need to remove it from the map because SDL only destroyed the texture element, but it don't remove it from our map here because our map still have an object, but we, with a null pointer. So we want to remove that from that map. So we say texture, texture map dot arrays, and we simply have to give the ID. And this is how we can remove an object from our texture map now we have our clean function the clean function is called when we close the program then we want to remove everything from the map and we want to clean we want to we don't want to leave any you know anything in the memory after the program is closed that's why we need this function now since this is a map since we have a map this texture uh, this texture map is a map so we can simply access it with a for loop with a simple for we need to have like an iterator so and you can see right here i can define this iterator which has the same type as the map so we have the string and we have the texture the pointer on the texture and you know this is iterator this is the name of that and now i just start my loop with if the iterator is equal to the begin and as long as we're different from the end we increment the iterator and we destroy the element and at the end we just clear the map we remove everything now it's important to call this function in our game engine because you know when the game engine get, get closed we need to clean everything when we when we when we, when the game engine clean function is called now we didn't even call our sdl quit and all that kind of stuff which is not so good but we can simply do it right now sdl quit we have the sdl quit we also want to quit img so say img the image sdl image we want to create it also because if you remember we initialize it so we also want to create it now here we need to destroy our window in our renderer that we created in our engine so sdl destroy renderer so we just pass our renderer to be destroyed those are pointers so they need to be free we need to free the memory actually that's what is going on here so we also need to destroy our window so destroy window just make sure later when you start your program anything won't you know just get wrong because the memory wasn't clean anymore. so we call our texture manager clean function to clean all texture get the instance a clean so we can even you know go ahead and write something like like this like um let's say sdl log to make sure this is working we say texture map clean so we can just leave it there like that so if we run the program so you can see in the main here we have our clean function for the engine called and the clean function of the engine will call the clean the clean function of the texture manager and yeah it will simply create like so if i close this you see info texture map cleaned so now we're sure that everything is removed from the memory and the next time we start the program we're sure that nothing's gonna mess around and create any kind of problem that's why it was important for us to deal with this now i think it's better for us to stop with this video like this in the next one we're gonna be talking about vector and transform because 
those are going to be important components so we're going to be implementing our physics we're going to be starting to implement our physics we're not talking about rigid body yet it's coming later when we create our player now we're starting with the with the transform and the vector because those are going to define how the object are going to be you know thrown on the screen and all that kind of stuff so thank you for watching videos on medical channel so the source code is in the description below and uh, you can still support me on patreon if you have any question concern if everything wasn't clear if you know you have any critic you want to you know just go ahead and write it down there i'm open for that and uh, maybe i'm doing stuff which are not so uh, you know optimistic for you you want to do it in another way you can still share with me and that would probably be also a good start one so see you ciao